Now in its ninth year. Now in its this ninth year. Gabnet. This is Gab American Broadcast the Great American Network. Broadcast Talk. Network. Like you've never heard it before. Like you've never heard what? it before. What? 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 Oh, 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 well, we may as well just play this too. Why not? Look at that. Live from Harlem, yeah, it's uh, the Ramble with Alex, and that's me. That's ridiculous. I, uh, I, I forgot to start recording the program, okay? And by not starting the program, recording, nobody's going to hear in the reruns, at least on, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the channel where we have the, you know, just the, the half hour, the hour and a half show. You know, the thing that's the recording, there are two of them. There's the one that's taken directly off the live show, and then one's a, a recording that we start. I didn't start the recording. I'm screwing up so badly lately. I'm just thinking of not doing this anymore. I really am. I'm serious. Just because I feel so embarrassed by the mistakes that I make. Um, you know, why, why didn't I start the recording? I do the start the recording every night. Yeah, so. Oh, well, you know. And I'll tell you what happened to me today. Uh, and, and, and this is not fun, okay? I took another fall today. Yeah. I took another fall today. Um, uh, we're coming back from, uh, we went out to, we got our, our uh, what do you call it, our shingle shots, which try saying that three times fast. Shingle shots, shingle shots, shingle shots, shingle shots. There we go. Anyway. Oh, by the way, if you want to hear the whole show, just watch the one that is uh, the, from the live recording. Okay. Instead of the one. If you, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway. So uh, where were we? Oh yeah. So I'm. We're, we we went and got the shingle shots, and then we went over and we got a hamburger, and we're walking back, and I don't know how I how I managed to do it. I mean, it it it's ridiculous how I managed to do it. I I don't have any idea how I did it. Okay, but I'm. We're just walking, and I turn slightly, and I just fall to the ground. And I banged up, you know my knee, how I banged up my knee here, which I can't show you the knee, actually, you know, but anyway. Um, oh, I, let me change this a little bit here for a second. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not doing this right, and then you couldn't see that. Uh, because, let me see here, choose virtual background, and then I go uh, use green screen. Okay, there we go. All right. Anyway, uh, so uh, <laughs> so anyway, I have the knee here. Oh, there you can see it. See, I had this. This was the knee I banged up about a year ago, and I banged it up over here and over into into uh, here, where you see. And that that was for my fall today. I don't think it's going to be as bad, but it's you know, nevertheless, it's it's a pain in the butt. You know, when these things happen. Okay. Let me see here. Um, we only have two people waiting? Wow. Okay. What the hell? We can uh, still do it, you know, uh, because we got Charlie Wallace, who's very intelligent and happens to be the only rocket scientist on this program. And then uh, we have a political science major. <laughs> In Josh Wheeler. Between the two, we could do a show about uh, should we go to the moon or not and can we afford it as a government. Uh, but anyway. Hello, Charlie. Hi. How you doing? Pretty good. I took the night off. So it, 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 you mean from... Uh, from, uh, uh, from umpiring, yeah. Umpiring. Let me see. What does your uh, shirt say today? Sci oh, the good thing about science is that it's true, whether you believe it or not. Okay. That's, is that for the Republicans to read? Yeah. Yeah. Because they feel they know more about science than we do, right? They certainly feel like they know more about medicine than doctors do. You know what I love? What I really love is uh, the, oh, here comes Mark. Here comes uh, Mark Thorner. Oh, good. Hello, Mark. 
Um, what I hate about politicians, what I hate about the guys in Washington, D.C., is all of them seem to be coming up with their own idea of what science is. Hmm. Like, they don't, to begin with, they don't understand what AI is. They have no concept. They just know that it, it's got to be evil, you know? And uh, I, I, they, they, they keep making decisions on science. They, they keep telling us scientifically what's a good abortion, what's a bad abortion. You know, the abortion pill isn't safe. The fact that the abortion pill has been used for, what, the last 20, 25 years, and there's mm -hmm. never been one, I think, one death from the use of the abortion pill, and then to go in front of a committee and say, it's dangerous. Yeah, okay. How's it? It's dangerous for the fetus. I'll agree with that. You know, so is, so is whiskey. But, huh? so, yeah. is, so is whiskey. Exactly. Go ahead, mom. Have a have a lot of booze on us. We sell that freely in this country, and you can have a kid who had fetal. What is it called? Fetal, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome. Fetal alcohol yeah. syndrome. Yeah. So anyway, uh, smoking bad for the baby too. Yeah, smoking's terrible for the baby, especially if you blow the smoke up the womb. <laughs> you know, it's not 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 a very good thing. Uh, hello to Mark Thorner. How's everything down in the wonderful wacky land? Eh. <laughs> oh boy. That good, huh? Yeah, it's the same old, same old. At least the weather's nice right now, so there, there is that. Yeah, but uh, he's in Florida. So. Anyway. Yeah. So, and, and you guys reminiscing about uh, old department stores. I swear to God, I was having that talk with my mom today, 93 years old. Yeah, we mentioned, and this is, this is for people, if, you, if you're watching this show on the, uh, on the dubbed version, forget it, we didn't run, we didn't run uh, Bubbles tonight, but we ran yeah. Bubbles live. So if you watched it live and you go back and you watch the live playback, then uh, uh, you'll see... Uh, that uh, you know that uh, that we were talking about Macy's. Oh, uh, no, A and S is because Brooklyn. Yeah, but the, but right. Macy's is Macy's own A and S too. No, but I no, well Federated I think did buy them. They bought A and S's and Stearns, and they're not around anymore. It's just Macy's, you know. Well, when I was a kid, I mentioned this with uh, with uh, Bubbles. When I was a kid. They brought, I think it was maybe in my early teens, maybe, they brought Macy's to San Francisco. My mother went batshit. She loved, oh my God, Macy's is coming to San Francisco. And she was so into that, you know. The only, and now they announced they're closing a lot of their stores, one of which is the San Francisco Macy's. Wow, that's gotta be like 70 years, easily. You know, so uh, when I think that it was like yesterday, <laughs> they opened it up, but it was a big deal that Macy's was oh, yeah. leaving New York and coming to San Francisco as well, you know. And they, I think they're keeping the New York store open because how are they going to hold the parade every year? <laughs> yeah, so. uh, but, but you remember when what, was, when, what stores were open? Uh, there was, well, Bloomingdale's was still open. What's on? Gimbal's. Gimbal's, oh, that was one. Or as they used to call it, Gembel's. Gimbel's. <laughs> yeah, but Gimbel's was right next to Macy's. Right. And they were always in competition with each other. The only thing that Gimbel's could never compete with was Christmas time with Macy's because Macy's was the Christmas time place. That's where every parent took their kid to sit on Santa's lap. <laughs> Mommy, where are we going where I can sit on Santa's lap? Well, we're going to Gimbel's. What? <laughs> you know, no, you can't go there. You know, that's not that's not Christmas time over at Gimbel's. That's for Jews. You know, <laughs> uh, you're Jewish, Mark, right? So's uh, Jeff. So's occasionally. So's so's, <laughs> so's our good friend uh, Alan here. Who else is Jewish? Oh, I am. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, um, I heard a minority here. Did you ever feel like bad when Christmas came around? That really? No. Well, because I always felt it was kind of like 
it was kind of a mixed blessing. You know, my parents always let me celebrate it. You know, they got me gifts at Christmas. They also got me gifts for my birthday, which was a week earlier. You know. Well, remember, that's because you were a one angle child. Only child. Yeah. And and the problem was, my mother Marjorie always says, "You're no, you were an only child. You were an only child." And I go, "Yeah." And, and what's the problem with that? Give me, give me one bad thing about being an only child. Why well, you didn't have any brothers or sisters? I said, "Good." <laughs> you know, that's why I grew up being very selfish. Okay. You didn't have a big brother that would beat you up every other day. Yeah, no big brother to beat you up. You know. No little sister to get the extra affection because there were only there were two other brothers in the family. Mm. And then also, isn't there a thing about birth order? That mm. children turn out a certain way based on birth order? That's what they say. And the middle child mm. is what, the worst? Or, yeah. Because he gets all the... The uh, middle child gets all the hand-me-downs, mm -hmm. which are not necessarily good. Were you an only child, Josh, or? Uh, no. No. How many other kids in your family? Uh, other than me, there are three others. Three others. So there were four in your family. Yes. Well, obviously not a Jewish family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jewish families are very are usually quite small. Usually, no, really. Look at the Orthodox community. Oh well, for, yeah, I forgot. Oh, well, I, I forgot about the Yids. That, that, that's yeah. because they think they're Mexican. Every other week they got to make a baby. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, what? You're producing your own minion? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they yeah, but you, you got to go a while because if you get a girl in there, you need ten men for the minion. So, yeah. Well, you know, you would go into these stores that were owned by the Hasidim. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, or as we Jews like to call them, the Yids, uh, mm. and uh, they um, they would have stores like B and H. Photo is That's you go down, they, they're closed on Saturdays. All right, of course. And, and then they Sabbath. huh? It's Sabbath, of course. It's a Sabbath, you know. And uh, sometimes there are you know there's like. Uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and all of that, and it closed for two days at a time. But working there are, some of them are Hasidim. You know, they're wearing the payas and the, uh, that's the hair that curls down to here, and the uh, long beards. Long beards and the, the talus, you know, which is usually under the coat. All right? Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then there are the non uh, Hasidim who work there as well. But uh, uh, you know who's running the place. Let me put it that way. Uh, and um, they um, they also have Hasidim women working there. But you know how you can tell the difference? The Hasidim men all wear yarmulkes. In fact, I, w I was thinking of just wearing a yarmulke all the time in New York to pass as Hasidim, you know. But I, I go in the B&H. Hey, give me, a, give me a discount. Okay, I got the hat. Okay, um, but the women don't wear yarmulkes. You know what they wear? Wigs. Well, there's they have to wear a headpiece. Most of the time, they're wearing scarves when they're not working. When they're out in public, they wear wigs. Because what yeah. is it? You're not supposed to bare your head to God. Is that what it is? You know. I mean, come on, it's God who made me bald in the first place. He may as have a chance to look at it. It's fine, wonderful work. How many How many of the four Jews that were here were anything other than Reform Judaism? I was raised conservative. Oh, you were? Yep. Okay. I was raised, raised so liberal that we were Nazis. <laughs> Who, whose line is that? That's some old comedian's old joke. I think that was Lenny Bruce who said that. So the fam my family was so uh, so uh, so. Uh, uh, well, I was or, I was no, raised no, in a reform synagogue. What about you, Jeff? Uh, I I remember when I was thirteen years old, I decided at that point I didn't have to go there again. Oh wow! Well. Right. Hmm. 
Hmm. You were running down the street because they had a moil chasing you. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody here know who a moil? What? Uh, well, uh, let's ask the non-Jews in the group here what a moil is. Yeah. Okay. Do you know, Josh? Uh, no. Well, <laughs> every every Jewish male, after he's born, has a ritual in which they do. It's a, a lovely ritual. I don't know who created it. <laughs> It was a warm and fuzzy ritual of cutting the tip off your penis. Or skin. And the guy who does it is the moil. Yep. He's yeah. usually a urologist, I think. No, usually <laughs> a rabbi. he's got to be a rabbi. What do you mean he's got to be a urologist? <laughs> oh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, uh, Dr. So-and-so. We've come to you because we want our son uh, uh, circumcised. How old is he? 27. You know, I mean. <laughs> I mean mm -hmm. You know. Is it eight days? It's like, it's kind of a, a ritual in which you're trying to scare a mole out of the ground. Okay, so. And they claim the baby doesn't, uh, if you've ever been to one, they claim the baby doesn't feel it. The baby is screaming its, its lungs out. out. You well, know? That's why. And, after it's done, they put a drop of wine. Oh, oh no, the baby. they do that beforehand. Oh, yeah, they got a number of the they, they, they put they soak uh, um, um, something like a washcloth or whatever, a towel yeah. in wine, and then they drip it into the kid's mouth and get him good and drunk. <laughs> All right, hey, I wanted to because be... God forbid they use Novocaine first or uh, something uh, like that. Well, uh, supposedly at that point in your life, you don't have that much feeling down there. Yeah, right. But so how come the kid screams and yells and right, yeah. you know, cries his eyes out? And then and then you hand the the um um the baby to the grandmother and she holds the baby and calms him down. Right. Okay. As he bleeds all over the yeah, place. Yeah. As the moil is sitting there with his knife going, <laughs> cleaning it off, you know. Where's the next, next one? Yeah, next. Next. Who came up with that idea? You know? Who came up with having a party after you do it? I mean, yeah. well, when uh, I was very, I was very privileged. I was uh, David Feldman, who I no longer talk to, but David Feldman uh, had his son, and they went to do the bris, and they hired the moil, and we all showed up there. And and uh, David said, you know, there are certain things they do at these brises. One of which, and they explained the whole thing. He said, and one other thing is that the parents pick a selection from their favorite novel or book and ask somebody to read it for them. And since you're the announcer, we'd like you to do it. And I said, okay, what's your favorite book? And he says, Elter Skelter. No. No. <laughs> what are you, what are you, you ruined my timing. Oh, sorry. You ruined my timing. Now I'm not going to tell the joke. Oh, you didn't even say hi to me when I came on. So. Oh, hi. Big deal. Anyway, <laughs> they hand me the book. It's Moby Dick. <laughs> I can picture this. So there I am at a bris reading from Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Moby, no you, you know. <laughs> There's a bad joke in there somewhere. No, there isn't a joke in there. That's for real. I read from Moby Dick. There's no cure for Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is no there is no cure for Moby. I agree with you. Okay. I'm glad you I'm glad you knew that for a fact. Um but anyway, it, it, I never could figure out why. Uh, you know, they, they say that, they, they argue that there's no reason for circumcision. There used to be, I think, back in ancient times, when it was for health purposes, all the Jewish rituals, being kosher and so on, were all health rituals, which, as time went on, no longer were relevant. Um, so, uh, you know. I'm not, I'm not sure if I... If I had got married and had a kid and he was a boy, I'm not sure I would have had him circumcised. You, you don't think so? Why not? 
Well, one, I wasn't very religious, and I'm still not. One, have you ever asked a woman whether she likes to look at a circumcised dick? No. No. Marjorie says they look funny, uncircumcised. Well, well it looks like an anteater. Yeah, well, once you get it hard, it looks like any other penis, but, you know. Yes. <laughs> All you got to do is teach Of course, if anybody here it. is uncircumcised, I apologize. Okay. No, sorry. Huh? No need to apologize. Oh, okay. You're the ones that got brutalized, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know who is an uncircum who's uncircumcised here. Right. Yeah. And but and, it's not very common. I, I may be more common now in the black community. Mm. But I, when I went to high school, I had two friends that were black, and mm. I think they were the only two blacks in the whole high school. But in any case. You know, whenever they got undressed for showers and stuff, everybody would look at them, and they were uncircumcised. I just really because most porno films of black guys, they're 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 uh, they're circumcised. Right. Well, that changed in the seventies and eighties. I think it became more because doctors wanted to make that extra money. You know? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I just I you know I I never uh, I I hear it's not important, you know, that you can get along without it. Oh yeah, yep. but I don't know. If you can get along without toes, you can get out along with <laughs> out your foreskin. Yeah, Charlie. Charlie's going without toes. That's that's Some. good. Yeah. Um, do you have all your toes, Josh? Uh, yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Want to make sure. See. Well, when I was forty, I had all my toes too. <laughs> he has no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking he hasn't been circumcised and he's got four toes. Missing. How many toes are missing? Six. Six toes. Ooh. You know, another four, we're going to have to hold you up. Uh, do you yeah, have well, one foot that's completely, or do you? Yeah, one foot, I have no toes, and I have one on the other. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it, does I'm it, missing one on the other. Do you, you have to have special something in your shoes or whatever? Or do you? Not anymore. They tried to get me fitted for them, but it actually made it worse. So I just don't yeah. worry about it anymore. Yeah. How long did it take to heal? A couple months. Yeah. Time. You must have had to learn how to walk again because your toes have a lot to do with your walking balance. Yeah, well, I wasn't the most graceful person to start with, but yeah, I, I do I do tend to fall down a lot, umpiring. So they, really, I, I fall down, but every time I fall down, I hurt myself. Yeah, don't do that. Look what happened to Joe Lieberman. Don't be falling down anymore. Yeah, I watched. I saw that he didn't. I should have sent him a cane beforehand. Yeah, right. Well, I'm going to start. Alex a cane, I'm going to so start, he... start taking a cane out when I walk. Not because I need it for walking, but because I want to keep. If I'm gonna, if I start to fall, maybe that will keep me from really taking a big plots. But maybe, uh, you know. But I, uh, well, I. It really, also adds a little bit of security to your mind that if you're on uneven ground or wet ground or something, that you could use the cane and less chance of falling. Yeah, I, I guess. You know, I mean, I don't know. I think probably if I use crutches, I'll be in better shape from uh, falling. Alex, have you ever been tested for your balance? Yes. I've, I've got balance problems because I've got neuropathy. Okay, that's what I, okay. Yeah. I, my memory won't be. Um, isn't there like a kind of therapy that they can do with you to try to... Mm. Uh, That's what gabapentin for, but it, it. Well, no, that that work. actually, what happens is the uh, the uh, I take uh, pregabalin, which is pretty much the same thing, and, but it makes me wobblier because it makes me lose my sense of balance. Yeah. If I didn't take it, I might have a sense of balance, but then my feet would hurt a lot. So you know, it's just, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a toss up. So I you know. Welcome, folks, again, once to uh, organ recital. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not fun. It's not fun. So, anyway, so I've had a lot of technical problems today. One thing after another, okay? And um, um, uh, I had a problem today. All of a sudden, all my, uh, a lot of my YouTube uh, videos from the recorded live ones like 
right now um, mm. uh, are uh, disappeared. I don't know where they went. I don't know how they how I lost them. But anyway, I still have them all saved. But nevertheless, it's you just wonder why you know. So after the show, if I wanted to go watch it on YouTube, it wouldn't be there. It wouldn't. No, it would be there. This will be there. And but when I put the show on, like um, uh, the other channel, where I then put it up on um, Facebook, huh. that one will not have bubbles. Okay, so uh, so, just watch watch the one. I don't know where you go for that anymore. You know what I've also put up on my uh, on my on my Gavnet uh, site today. I have a QR code. I I was thinking about it. I went. I was getting lunch today, and they had a you know, they don't have menus anymore. They have QR codes, and if you don't have a, a phone. Then you can't find out what you can have for lunch. But anyway, and I went, there's got to be a place you can go and you get these QR codes. And I said, where do I go to get a QR code? And it said, right here, boom. <laughs> and it's just you put in your, your email, you know, your uh, site, your you URL. Need, yeah, you used to need to read the QR codes, a software program on your phone, but it's built into iPhones now. You just hold the phone over the QR code and it's built into it, and it reads it for you. Really? Are you I you, no, I, th you have, I, I have to bring up the QR thing. QR I know. Code. I just put my phone, the photo over it, and it brings it up. Really? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I also have a program on there from years ago. And so yeah, but maybe, any, it's, maybe it's automatically. Yeah, yeah, it's probably automatically doing it, because I, I did it, uh, um, you know, I just hold it up and. So you have a QR code on your website so people could send you money easy? No, so they can go to the site on their phone, you know, and on their iPad, mm. have it there. You know, just a little convenience. And everybody, and nobody ever tells you what the QR code is for anyway, and it usually takes you to a website. So that's exactly what this does. So, mm. so I just said, you know, gabnet.net, and then it uh, made up the QR code, and that was it. And it works. It does work. Yes, everybody, go over to gabnet.net right now and look at the page. And over the bottom, bottom right-hand side, there's a QR code. And uh, I should have a QR code that sends them somewhere else. That would be fun. Or porn site, maybe. That would be, that would be fun, too. You know. DonaldTrump.com. Yeah. Yeah. yeah DonaldTrump.com. Yeah. Yeah, Rick roll. <laughs> slash, Rick roll. slash sexual pony ride. I don't know. Now, do you think? Let's talk politics for a moment, and we we haven't gotten into politics tonight, and I think it's important to. Um, do you think Donald Trump is circumcised? <laughs> I almost lost my water that I was drinking. Well, let's talk to the political wonk here, uh, Josh. Josh, do you think uh, he does? He seem like he's uh, circumcised. Well, I would say, based on historical fact, there's a 50% chance that he is and a 50% chance that he isn't. Well, that okay. certainly gives us an it answer, is doesn't it? Bullshit. Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. There, that, that's, that's what I think. Let's uh, ask Suri. Hey, Suri. <laughs> is Donald Trump circumcised? I think that He's maybe. He's so fat that he doesn't even know it. <laughs> well, you know, Stormy Daniels, did you, did you ever see Stormy Daniels on the uh, uh, Kimmel show? Um, he um, had Stormy Daniels on, and he had a, a thing made up of different size penises. And he had her pick the one that looks the most like Donald <laughs> Trump's penis, and she picked the thing that looked like a mushroom. <laughs> So, so the only thing that came up was Donald Trump had his son circumcised in 2016. I was amazed that ABC allowed these penises to be displayed so she could pick one. You know. <laughs> That's a little strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, how about Joe Biden? Do you think he's circumcised? Nah. 
Nah. No. What like, makes you you suddenly came up with that? I don't answer. know. I just think the Catholics were into that. Yeah, Catholics didn't circumcise back when right. Joe Biden. Oh, they really? didn't when I was growing up. So. Really? Well, I don't think anybody really cares. So. <laughs> no. It's it's not gonna it, it, one vote's not gonna go one way or the other, you know. By the way, I'm so amazed at. Uh, first of all, uh, just when it's it's election season, and the way all these people are whoring themselves out. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump, to upstage Biden, who was holding a big deal yesterday at Radio City Music Hall, where he raised twenty six million dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, went out to like I don't know. Queens or Long Island, I can't remember where, where this cop lived who was killed here recently, to meet with the family. And and really, I mentioned last night that Trump is becoming a uh, a uh, ambulance chaser. Anytime <laughs> somebody gets somebody somebody gets killed by somebody, he goes out He's to there. say, "My hearts and prayers are with you." He went to the first place he went to was somebody who was killed by I think by a. Um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, killed by a, uh, a an immigrant, an immigrant or something. Yeah, uh, and um, he um, he went out there, and she said, the wife said, "I don't like this. We don't want this to be political. My husband is dead." So she really berated him for even doing it. Yeah, you know. But today I hear that. Joe Biden is going to, where is that bridge again? Is it Baltimore? Where is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maryland. Maryland. Sir Francis, Sir Francis Key Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Baltimore, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, here's the walking encyclopedia. Well, it's not, <laughs> it's not Sir Francis Key. It's Francis Scott Key. He Francis, Scott Francis, Scott Key. Scott Key. Francis Scott Key. Francis Scott Key. The Queen did not knight him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. But he did write the national anthem. He did write the national anthem. Stars, yeah, well, Star actually, Trek he didn't. He only wrote the lyrics. Right. Yeah, just the lyrics. The yeah. the actual song mm -hmm. was a bar singing song called yep. "Anacreon in Heaven." Right. Uh, I don't know. Originally, it was something like "Let's drink some more beer, let's get drunk till we <laughs> fall down," you know, something like that. And uh, there's a there's an Irish band, uh, Ash Oak and Thorn, that uh, that performed it. Very good. With the original yeah. lyrics. Yeah. 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 Uh, and and speaking of Irish, um, you know, I, just, I wanted to join into the uh, conversation about circumcisions. Oh boy, here we go! I, yeah. I was born Roman Catholic Irish, and I am circumcised. So I would guess that uh, Joe Biden is circumcised as well. Oh, you know, okay. but most Asians, if you look it up, I just looked it up. Well, I'm not really Asian. I think we should you have know, a club. Oh, for my daddy, my daddy Tadashi Yamaguchi was not circumcised. No, he wasn't circumcised. Okay, but you know, I mean, we should probably start a little club of people who are circumcised and refer to each other as circs or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in the Catholic school system in Chicago, and mm -hmm. I met hundreds of guys going through school, and none of them were circumcised in Chicago. How did you know that? Because we took oh, phys ed, and we shower after that, or we actually when we did swimming, we swam naked. For, yeah, but did for, you did you did you did you check out each other's dicks? Did you do that? The, the, it was they, right there. They yeah. swam naked because the priest wanted to watch him swim. That's probably why. <laughs> but they said it was for, uh, Sorry. Hygienic reasons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, um, Jeff's got his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Uh, so I was in a high school. Mm -hmm. Oh boys at that time and we would swim same thing naked mm -hmm. you check out who's who really yeah. oh, okay sure I so how many guys were uncircumcised in that school i don't know we had a lot of italians so <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is uh, you know what i'm thinking about i you know every night i have to after this is over i have to go and post the shows to youtube and they ask me for the sake of advertising uh was there any questionable material on this show was there 
<laughs> were there any bad words that were said, whatever. And I, I, tonight, probably, because at no point did we use a four-letter word yet, oh. I would just say no. But then I'm thinking, could I get caught for having this conversation on circumcision? No, oh, it's, it's anatomy. Yeah, I mean, what, why is that a problem? <laughs> Mark's kind of giving up on us here. What are your thoughts, Mark? Yeah, yeah, like I'm going to really trust uh, Google's algorithm on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, machine learning in the guise of artificial intelligence. Yeah, there's our real winner. You know, uh, I, 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 almost every night, it says to me, uh, by the way, uh, we're, you're, we're not monetizing you. So then I have to request for a review, and then I always get a note saying, congratulations, you've passed the review. Well, I knew that. There wasn't a single four-letter word in the whole damn show. Hmm. But every about every other night, you know, I got to ask for a review. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, you know? Uh, but that's their, how good their algorithm is. Yeah. Their AI. Yeah. So anyway. Maybe we can get like a special little uh, no. thing we can wear on your shirt. Yeah. That says. I'm immune. You're uh, immune. Anyway. Um, so anyway. So um, where were we? We were talking about uh, um, a, a Trump. And we were talking. Oh, yeah. So anyway. I was talking about Baltimore or wherever this. Francis Scott Key yeah. Bridge. Oh, say, can you see it? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, I'm sure they pull that joke a lot down there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, today Biden announces, okay, that next week he's going down there. And I'm thinking, well, what's he going to be able to do? In fact, he Did can do. Think the federal government is going to pay the entire yeah. cost to rebuild it? Yeah, but he can sign those papers at the White House, can't he? But no, he won't be able to do it next week because he's going down to Baltimore, okay? And I'm thinking, if he really cared about Baltimore, he would have gone yesterday. But, oh, he had that $26 million benefit at Radio Priorities. City Music Hall. What? Priorities. Yeah. Yeah. I so obvi obviously that million. wasn't a priority for him. And now, uh, Josh, who is the political wonk on our show, whatever that means, uh, will now tell us why all politicians are whores. Josh? Because God wants them to be. <laughs> there you go. That's the official answer. <laughs> and who said that being a whore was a bad thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. God. <laughs> And, you know, right now I'm looking for a good Bible for my home hearing, and I think I'm going to hire, um, I think I'm going to go out and get one of those Bibles that Trump is selling. It comes with, <laughs> it, it comes with the Constitution, yeah. not, that he, yeah. not that he knows it. Now, where does the Constitution go in that Bible? Before <laughs> the main text know. of the Bible? I don't or know, I just heard that it back. comes with a copy of the Constitution. You know what I bought today? There, I, I spent. Uh, I should have brought it in here. Fifty-six bucks on it. Uh, I I um, bought uh, from Amazon uh, this book on um, Rocketeer, the comic. It was done by Dave. What's his name? Dale Stevens was his name. What was Dave his name? Stevens. Dave Stevens. And I saw a documentary on him a day or so ago, and I said. This is some of the most gorgeous graphic novel work I've ever seen in my life. So I had to get it, and I got it today. And it's gorgeous, just gorgeous. But he was sexier than most guys. He, the, the girlfriend for Rocketeer was based on Betty Page, and actually this is the complete works of, of, of him doing Rocketeer, and towards the end of his life, she was naked a lot. So, I mean, a, a beautiful work. Just absolutely, 
Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, oh yeah. In my, fact, Dave was really good friends with one of my oldest friends, mm -hmm. and I've gotten a couple of postcards from Dave along the way. Oh really? And, uh, yeah, and uh, really nice. By the way, yes, the face was Betty Page, but the model that he used was his wife, Brink Stevens. Brink Stevens, who he divorced, but still kept. Uh, she still kept modeling for him. Yeah, and the movie version wasn't that bad either. No, I liked oh. the movie, yeah. uh, but it was all taken from. Um, it was kind of lifted from Commander Cody and the kinda. Lost Am. <laughs> kinda, See, it is. How yeah. did he get away but with that? How did he get away with that without getting sued? Well, how did Proctor and Bergman get away with Jamin forever? Then <laughs> you know they did. It's just like wow, you know. But what a! It, it it was lightning in a bottle from the first issue onward. Hmm. It was like, yeah, what's the next issue? What's the next and issue? And he took you know? forever to do each issue because he, he, he would, they said his main artistic tool wasn't a pen or, uh, or ink or whatever. It was an eraser because he, yeah. he, oh, that eyebrow isn't right. And he would go back and redo the eyebrow mm -hmm. and spend days redoing the eyebrow. Which is interesting because I think he made his bones as a storyboard out artist out west in Cal in uh, Hollywood, which means you have to be fast. Well, he worked. Didn't he work for Hanna Barbera at one point or somebody? Yes, he did yeah. with Doug Wiley, the guy who created Johnny Quest. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, holy! You know, you look at this guy's background, you're like, holy crap! But you his know? his artwork is just phenomenal. I mean, you know, it's it's not Rembrandt, okay? It's a different kind of thing, but of its sort, which is, you know, it was pretty good. Wait, 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 hold on a second. I'm not used to this. There is Kevin sitting oh. there in a place mm -hmm. I've never seen Kevin before. He's usually in his office. Where are mm -hmm. you, Kevin? I'm up in Gresham, Oregon. Oh, really? And now is yeah. th is that a uh, mo hotel room? No, this is. Uh, remember my buddy Troy? Yeah. Who passed away from ALS? Oh yeah. Come up into his house. His wife. We're visiting his wife. Oh okay. All right. Yeah, and then we're going to take my uh, daughter back to uh, university in Eugene down south yeah. later or on Sunday. Yeah, well, that's very nice. It, uh, is it cold up there? Because you got a fireplace going there. It's stove. Nice. <laughs> well, stove. I'm actually downstairs. That's the heater. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not really. It's it, it, is is that uh, does that just operate on its own with gas and stuff, or uh, do you have to stoke the remote thing? control? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> is, is that actually a video of flames there, or no? They're flames, and it's actually heater. It's kicking out heat. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. downstairs. There. Wait a minute. Let me just warm my hands by your fire. There. <laughs> Feels good. Ah. Oh. I'm in the Lego room. Hmm. I'm in the Lego room. That's what she does on her spare time now, is build Legos. She's got these extravagant Legos everywhere that they've been building over the years. Okay. She's got a, like a four-foot Star Wars Lego over here and a roller coaster over there and these lighthouses and buildings and all kinds of stuff here. Wow. wow. Is this for your daughter? No. No, this is my friend's wife and her son okay. in these things. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. So uh, also, uh, I want to know what's going on with the Tom Yamaguchi. What political things have you been doing lately? Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, I uh, don't want to get started on that. <laughs> Why don't you want to get started on it? Uh, politics in Berkeley right now are pretty pretty wacky. Um, uh, one thing is, I'm actually a, uh, a city commissioner right now. Really? Uh, where? Berkeley? Yeah, yeah. I uh, wow. I joined the uh, the commission on aging, and uh, and the uh, the city council member that appointed me uh, resigned, and uh, and I don't know. I there's a special election to to replace him, but um, and did you run? 
No, no, oh. no, I'm not running. Oh, oh, so you're just taking it while they wait for have yeah. for an election. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, one of the candidates says he's not going to replace any of his commissioners. So, you know, I guess I'm sort of safe, you know. They could replace me if they wanted. But uh, the sad thing was uh, this particular councilman, uh, Rigel Robinson, really great guy. Yeah. And uh, and uh, he uh, he was just harassed. I mean, you know, the, the they they were they were they were just you know he was getting death threats and things like that. And he says, "I had enough of this. And I'm 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 gone." Yeah, he just quit. And he was also planning on running for mayor too. And so he quit his uh, mayoral campaign as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I'm very about to bump down about that because I because he was the kind of, actually I. He when he did his uh, announcement a video he had me in his video you know we were walking in local park with my bicycle and talking and so yeah I'm pretty bummed out about it you know um, but you know uh, it's a, it's unfortunate because that's happening down in local politics a lot of places right now and I've seen it trickle down from you know the the DCs and the and the the, the higher end and it's look it's trickling down to local politics. It's pretty nasty. People are yeah. doing nasty things to each other. Yeah. Wow. You know. Yeah. Well, well, he got a he got a double whammy. Um, one thing. Um, uh, there's big, of course, the continuing pro- uh, controversy of People's Park, and the council voted to put some housing on the on the park. You know. Oh, and, oh yeah, I saw that. And uh, and actually, that's the that's the district that he represents is the area that, that includes People's Park. And so, as a pro housing person, he he voted for that deal. And uh, then, the university, which owns the land, uh, came and evicted uh, the homeless people out of it, and put up a whole bunch of these. Oh, what do you call them? The, you know the the containers that you put on container ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around the uh, red, red, did a whole perimeter around it. It, was, it really looks ugly. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so people started harassing in front. And then the thing with Gaza exploded yeah and so and 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 there every every city council meeting there's a whole contingent of people that are just shouting down the council members shouting down other people just because they they just want to have their little temper tantrum and um, what what can local governments do about gaza that's what i don't get yeah that. yeah that doesn't make sense they're all no, sitting no. around they <laughs> go to the they go to the council meeting santa cruz monterey everywhere they're all going in and saying you know stop the you know ceasefire 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 yeah. and what the hell can they do about it absolutely by the nothing. way can i mention that yesterday when they did the radio city music hall protesters like crazy outside mm-hmm. about right. about gaza yeah right i mean more than biden would have liked to have had at, at that the gathering um uh, but that's appropriate. I mean, that's a yeah. It's a bigger. It's a well, bigger. Well, I mean, platform. I would be, if I had known it, I probably would have gone down and protested too because he's done nothing about this. You know. Uh, no, I can't say he's done nothing about it. No, I wouldn't say that at all. Well, no, he hasn't done but, enough to you know keep him in good stead with those people, and they're not asking for much. They're asking for the United States just not to take sides in that deal. Well, we did abstain from the last vote. Uh, of the we of the abstained. US. We didn't vote. That's the bad well, part. That's different than vetoing. That's a I lot guess, different than media. I, I, it's enough to piss off Netanyahu. Well, <laughs> they, he was not happy with that about that. Yeah, but decision. I think I think we should have voted uh, the right way on that, and not not just simply held out and said. I mean, do you do you feel we did the right thing by? Just not uh, by abstaining. Well, I think it that you know that you know under the politics of the situation, you know, uh, maybe that would have been the right thing. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that's that's going on, you know. You know, politics be da- it, but politics be damned. People are dying. I mean, at an extraordinary rate. I mean, when you consider that 1,200 people were killed by by uh, Hamas in Israel and then the the uh, uh, Israelis went in and killed 
about 33,000 people in Gaza? That's a little disproportionate, you know? That's what I, there's a, it's, a, if it isn't overkill, then you can see overkill from there, you know? Yeah. yeah what, well, I don't know about this, uh, uh, you know, unproportionate. I mean, I think any deaths are hard. And, and yeah. the way that Hamas did it is exceedingly hard. You know, of course, I, can't, of course. I can't understand how people can just gloss over. Of course, but then how you do know, you... And that's what a lot of these people yeah, but, in the city council meetings are doing. They're just like, they're glossing over this horrendous, uh, you know, attack. And, you know, people getting... No, we're not glossing it over at all. Murdered, Tom, getting, Tom, getting raped. Tom, Tom, we're not... We're not uh, uh, glossing it over it what, the, well, what there they, are people who are if 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 it had it stopped at that point the world would have been sympathetic towards israel but with what's happened nobody is sympathetic towards israel you know I, they they took what was uh the sympathy of the world and overnight turned it into the exact opposite and as a Jew, I feel uncomfortable with that. I think that Netanyahu has created more anti-Semites than anybody I can name in recent history. You know, and that includes, uh, 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 what's his name? Kim Kardashian's former husband. <laughs> oh, Kanye West? Kanye West. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yay. How, how, Yay. Is it, how is it down there uh, uh, in Florida? Um, on this issue i mean are they pretty much strictly behind israel all the way down there because it's a pretty large much. jewish population or a large pretty jewish much. population that's afraid of the cold uh <laughs> you know um do you do i they, think i think netanyahu wants to destroy gaza and push it into the ocean i think he's just like trump yeah. Well, he's not just like Trump. He, <laughs> well, Jared Kushner was Jared Kushner wants to wants to develop it. You know, he wants to we're going to push out all those Palestinians. Let's let's build up uh, some some hotels. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how 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 do, how does it play itself out down there? Uh, do you find it? Do you have to keep your mouth shut, Mark, about things. I I do not share my opinions about this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is there a reason? I mean, is it just that? Yeah, because uh, I see it through a different lens than everyone else, so it's not the popular opinion right now. How is the how how is that lens? Is it? Well, you're a Jew, of course. Yes, and I'm very much a Zionist, and I've been oh, watching. Oh, okay. Since I've been a kid, what's been going on there, and <sighs> yeah. I agree with Mark. Not, he hasn't even said it. I am not pro-Palestinian at this point. And if you know the history, if you know really know the history, and I'm going back before the Second World War, through the Second World War, after the origins of what happened, then you'll know that, yeah. Well, the origins go all the way back to Balfour. No, this goes back even before that, my friend. Well, the goes... Jews, the Jews, and the uh, and the Palestinians in the area—I guess I don't know if they were called Palestinians back then—really got along very well. Uh, in fact, the Jews who lived in Palestine were considered part of the Palestinian people who lived in that area. They just happened to be Jews as opposed to Muslims, uh, and um, uh, Balfour Palest... ba Balfour came along and made trouble. You know, and these two these two groups, which got along up until that point, stopped getting along. Look up, look up something called Hitler's Arabs. Hitler's Arabs. Just look it up afterwards. I will. Read, I will. I, read yeah. the history, and then when you when you start connecting the dots, you'll be like, "Oh shit!" Okay, there <laughs> okay. goes your monetization. Sorry. Okay. Well, no, uh, no, that's okay. That's okay. That is a political comment. <laughs> Yeah, well taken. Because well taken. I, but the thing that really bothered me was not so much. There was like a lot of anti-Semitism that came up out in this country after the October sixth. That I was like, whoa, oh, oh, that that was yeah, yeah, that that it's an overkill. Was, 
that that really made me well what, go. what i'm saying is is that i think what netanyahu did and this is just between you and me and the lamppost and that is uh, what he did gave a justification to people to be i mean they were always anti-semites but it gave them a sense of permission to come out and play out that anti-semitism you know and it uh, you know i mean it's it's not a mm -hmm. it, it's 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 just the whole thing's horrible. And so I, why doesn't Hamas, if they want the war to stop, stop lobbing missiles into well, Israel? Well, Hamas, Hamas. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, and, and return the hostages immediately. Because Israel Hamas doesn't care. Because Hamas, do, because Hamas doesn't care. But Hamas does not make up most of the Gazan people. Well, they were voted in, weren't they? They were voted in in, I think it was 2012, correct me if I'm wrong, 2006. Mark. 2006. 2005 or 6. Okay, yeah. then 2006, and they had then never allowed elections to be held again. And it's pretty well known that the people in Gaza are not happy with Hamas, but Hamas rules the place uh, like, a, like a, what it looks like, a prison camp, you know? Uh, yeah. And that, that's the problem they've had. Um, and those kids that have been killed weren't even born in 2006. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's it, all of it's, it's, a, it's a big mistake, the whole problem down there. And, and what are we going to do about it? There's not much we can unless uh, some people want to suddenly come to a table and talk about it. But uh, this is, uh, I don't know, this is not, not good. It's never been good. And um, no. we've never done anything to try and solve the problem. And every president, by the way, I'm going to start playing the theme here. Every president we've had in recent years, in, in, this, in the last second half of the last century, have tried to solve that problem one way or another. And they've all failed, okay? Uh, because nobody's been able to come up with the secret sauce to solve the problem. Uh, hey, listen. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. I really do. You know, uh, Mark, thank you so much for being here this evening. We enjoyed you being here, as well as Charlie and uh, Alan and Jeff and, of course, Tommy Amaguchi. It's always a pleasure when Tom comes to the table, as well as Kevin, who's looking very cozy up there <laughs> in the, the northern part of the United States. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me warm my hands there, too. <sighs> Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. That's our citizen panel for this week. Uh, we will uh, see them all, all of you here again on Monday when we do the pop-up show. And uh, don't forget that Amy Manuel is next with the intersection. You can call her on Skype at GabNet Live, at GabNet Live. Uh, we'll be back here again also here next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>